Okay, hi, my name is Dirk, and I'd like to show you how to light up an arbitrary set of LEDs in a cube at any given time, despite the fact that the usual construct of such a cube actually makes that impossible. What we have here is a small LED cube with 27 LEDs. It was built like you would see on instructables.com or microcontroller.net. So the anodes are piggyback soldered on top of each other and become a column of the cube. And the cathodes are soldered together to become a plane of the cube. Each anode column, we've got nine of these, are connected through resistors to the Arduino or AVR I.O. ports, R pins, and the cathodes, or the cathode planes, are switched to ground through resistors, right here, because uh, a plane needs to be able to sink current for up to nine LEDs, which is a bit much for an AVR I.O. pin. In order to switch on an LED, let's say in the lower right corner, put this in here, this one, like this, we need to power up the anode column here, and we have to set the lower plane to ground. If you want to light up the upper left LED here, like this, we have to power up this anode column and set the upper plane to ground. Now, if we want to have both of these LEDs on, we would power up this anode column, this anode column, and set the upper and the lower plane to ground. But this results in this, obviously. All four LEDs are on. So, how do we get this? Well, this is only possible with a visual trick, by alternating the switching on the LEDs. Let me show you. Okay, let me go down with the frequency. So, like that. Now, we need to increase the frequency up to the point where the human eye is not able to differentiate anymore. Let me just go a bit higher with the frequency. Now, you can already see where we're getting at. So, with the construct of an LED cube, which does not allow to switch on arbitrary sets of LEDs across more than one plane at a time, we will need to cycle through the planes in a high enough frequency. Let me show you how I've implemented this in the Arduino environment. What I've done is I split my program up into two parts. Um, both parts act as a common buffer which holds the current states the LEDs are supposed to have. Uh, one part runs in the background, cycles through the planes and switches on the LEDs in the currently active plane. The other takes care of the animation part and sets the states of the LEDs in the buffer. Okay, let's go through the details here. First I define the plane pins, that's the Arduino or AVRIO pins which connect the planes through the transistors to ground, 11, 12 and 13. Then I have my column pins which are connected to the anode columns. Um, pins are 2 to 10 in this case. Uh, next I have an array um, which is basically my buffer. It's a 3 by 9 array and I can set LEDs to low or high in there. Now let's go to the setup function. What I do in here is to enable output pin mode for all pins involved. Obviously that is required for anything to work here. But the interesting part is this. I use timer 2 which is predefined in the Arduino environment. And if you set this bit, TOIE2, in 
the register of the timer mask uh, to that enables overflow interrupt. That means that any time this timer goes into overflow, I receive an interrupt. This is an 8-bit timer, so this will occur um, every 256 steps. So what do I do with this interrupt? Well, I can define an interrupt service routine. In this case, an interrupt service routine for timer 2 overflow. This occurs roughly every 2 milliseconds. That's a frequency of 489 hertz. And what do I do there? I, first of all, switch off the cube um, by switching off all three planes. Then I set uh, the LEDs, which are supposed to be active in the current plane, so I switch on the column pins, the respective ones. And then I enable that current plane. And then I increase my plane counter for the next cycle. Now, every plane is treated uh, and every three a third occurrence and every third occurrence. So that is a frequency of 163 hertz per plane, which is definitely enough to trick the eye. Okay, this is running in the background. And uh, let's go to the main program, the loop program. In that I, first of all, set all LEDs to low. And then for a, a number I set in the top uh, four in this case, so I uh, randomly choose four LEDs and set them to high. And then I wait for, uh, in this case, uh, CD delay is set to 100 milliseconds to do the next step. Okay, then I'll just upload this code and we'll see what it looks like. That's pretty nice, I think. Right. So what I've also done now is I connected a small oscilloscope to one of the plane pins. Let me show you what that tells me. I hope you can see something. You can see that this plane pin is on one third of the time and two thirds of the time it's off, and that's where the other planes are active. And this occurs in a frequency of 163 hertz, which is what we've calculated. Now, if I go and select all the way the duty cycle, and you don't see that at all, unfortunately. It's 32.24%, roughly a third. That's what we calculated. Okay. I hope this can be helpful to some of you, and uh, thank you very much for watching.